So hi guys, thanks for joining on a different uh, day and time. Uh, we're being a little flexible this week with um, all of our coaches that are visiting. Sarah, Brooke, Tanner. So we're um, all powwowing. And um, Mullen is going to, and maybe Ashley, if she's available, <laughs> is going to go through and talk about um, some awesome takeaways that they were um, at, was it Saturday? Because she's a Super Friday, and then Saturday, she, uh, Melanie Mitchell did an additional training. And um, I'm thinking she's starting to do, like, podcasts and all kinds of awesome training. If you follow her, um, a lot of times she'll do, like, Coach Tip Tuesday or something like that. She's always doing um live videos. So obviously if somebody um, has been the top coach for three years in a row, you should listen when they talk. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and um, let Danielle go for and tell, you know, her takeaways. And um, Danielle has been one of the most consistent coaches that I've ever had. I um, really love that, you know, she's so willing to help anytime I ask. She's always you know, hey, do you need anything? And she's been like that since the very beginning. So, Mullen, I really appreciate you always stepping in and <laughs> at a minute's notice anytime I ask you um, anything at all. And, Ashley, I'm so glad that you were able to hop on without your busy baby. So um, I'll let uh, Danielle start. And then if there's anything else that you didn't want to cover or didn't cover or anything, then we can have Ashley pop in too. So. All right. Um, yeah, I just went through and put everything into a big PowerPoint this morning. So I'll just go through it. And then, Ash, if there's anything that I didn't cover that jumped out to you, um, feel free to jump in. But like April said, we went to a training that Melanie Mitro does. Um, the last two years, she's done it the day after Super Saturday. And it has only been open to her downline. And this year was the first year she opened it to anybody network wide. So um, since we were already in Pittsburgh, it was $25. We went for the day and had basically one-on-one -on -one training with the top coach for the last three years. So um, I will share my screen. And I think if I put it in presentation mode, I can't see anything, which freaks me out. So I'm just going to do it like this. Um, but basically what it was, it was, it was called the purpose event. It was a dream team training, um, last January. And it sounds like it's going to be every year. So every January, she's going to have it. Um, Carl Deichler actually stayed the night so that he could stop in in the morning and talk to us, which was pretty cool. And these were kind of his big points that he wanted to drill in. Um, basically, be strong, be grounded, and have a plan, um, and achieve it with simplicity. You aren't running alone, and he kept saying, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. There are trainings, there are scripts, there are resources for you to use. You do not have to go out and recreate a whole system to make coaching work. It's already there for you. Um, and he also said it will be harder than you thought. You are starting a business and you are running a business. It's not going to be easy. There, were, there will be obstacles, but it will be worth it. And he said pushing through and working through all of the hard parts instead of quitting and running away give you the greatest reward because you're accomplishing things for yourself. Um, for, she said, you basically have to have these four things. You have to have a goal. You have to have a vision. You need to have a purpose and you need to have a plan. And then you have to execute on that. And this is where most people fall short and why they don't achieve success because they have all of those four things, but they never actually take action and do anything about it or do enough. So goals. You need to identify what your top priorities and what your purpose is. Um, and we'll, I have some slides that kind of go over that a little bit more. You need to set goals that are in line with your priorities. So if your priority is to be home, you know, every night with spending all evening with the kids, be at every family function, you know, watch your two hours of TV every night, get eight hours of sleep, 
your goal cannot be elite top 10 because there's no way that you're going to be able to mesh those together. Um, so you have to make sure that whatever your priorities are, and that's completely fine, whatever your priorities are, but your goals have to match up. And then if your goals scare the crap out of you, tell people. Um, like I've, I've told Jason that my goal this year is to be elite. And since I'm star zero diamond, I have a lot of work to do. But I've told him and I've told April, I've told her team. So it keeps you accountable. It keeps you pushing because if you don't tell anybody what your goals are, it's easy when it gets hard to just kind of backstep and say, well, maybe I won't push for that because that's a little too hard. So if they scare you, tell people. And then identify activities that are gonna move you towards your goal. I actually had to put this little sticky note on my computer right here where I see it 24 seven. And in big letters, it says stop scrolling because I spend so much time scrolling Facebook that I'm wasting time and scrolling Facebook is not getting me towards my goal. Um, and then I have other slides that we'll talk about kind of figuring out the activities and things. And then you have to track, you have to track your progress towards your goal. The second part of that was a vision. You need to know your vision and you need to make sure that your team knows your vision. Because if you don't know where you're going, people won't follow you. Um, like Jamie just said, it's so inspiring listening to Carl because he knows exactly where he's going. He knows exactly what he wants. He knows exactly what he's trying to accomplish. If people have no idea what you're doing, if you're all over the place, nobody's going to want to follow you. And you have to own yourself. You don't have to do and have your vision align with someone else just because you think that's a good vision. Um, set it for yourself. And also put your blinders on and figure it out. Um, don't compare yourself to your upline. Don't compare yourself to your success partner. Focus on you. Um, in some ways you can figure out what your vision is, is just kind of sit back and think. And I actually had to do this and like take time to actually think about it. Where do you envision your life in three years? Um, who do you want to spend your time with? Where will you be? Will you still live in the same place? Will you, you know, things can change. So where do you want to be in three years? What are you going to be doing? And you can dream big. If it's, again, if it scares you, that's fine. Your purpose. And this is another one that I think a lot of people struggle with because they don't really know. So they just kind of grab something because other people choose it. And then they don't have enough drive to work this business. So what inspires you? What makes you get out of bed every morning? And what drives you forward? And what do you feel like you're called to do? And again, you have to be specific. Just look at me. Just saying, um, I want to help people. That's not specific enough of a purpose. It needs to be why you want to help people, how you want to help people, and it has to actually make you want to take action and get out of bed. And then the fourth part was creating a plan. Um, a good plan breeds solid actions. So if you have a plan and you know exactly what you're doing, when you're doing it, and why you're doing it, you are going to be much more successful than someone who's flying by the seat of their pants and is kind of grabbing and choosing things as it comes along because it seems like a good idea. Um, and it's like driving across the country. If you have shitty directions, you're going to get lost. So you need to have a plan. You need to know where you're going and you need to know how you're getting there. You don't necessarily have to know the whole plan at once, but you at least have to have enough to start you in the direction that you wanna go. And then take, we're gonna take that plan and you break it into 12 week increments, which we'll go over in a couple of slides. But, and I love this quote, a good plan today is better than a perfect plan tomorrow. Because if you spend every day trying to get everything perfect, and having the perfect posts and the perfect graphic and the perfect everything, you're never going to get anywhere because you're always going to be waiting for tomorrow. 
So get a few ideas, get somewhat of a plan and just do it. And then executing, which is the hard part. So set 12 week goals. If you haven't read the 12 week year, um, I can't think of who wrote it, but if you search 12 week year, it'll pop up. It's really, really great at breaking things down and it helps you put things into more manageable goals. So you're gonna break the goal down. Write it on your calendar, make it an appointment, make it a date, and then each day, do actions that are going to get you to that goal. And also track your successes, but also track your failures. And don't think of them as failures, just think of them as, as ways that didn't work. So maybe steer a little off course and find a new way. It doesn't mean that you are a failure, it just means that that way did not work for you. Also reflect. And um, Melanie said she does this every Sunday. She takes a few hours, she reflects on the past week, and then plans her future week. So sh she looks at the last week and says, um, like, did I accomplish my goals? Did I move my business forward? What could I have done better? What could I have done differently? And then she makes a plan for the next week. And she talked a lot about working in your pockets, which I'll cover in a little bit. Um, but basically, we all have the same 24 hours. The top coaches like Melanie Mitro, Lindsay Matway, Bonnie Engel, they don't have some extra magical 48 hours in the week. We all have the same 24 hours, but you just have to ask yourself, is the sacrifice worth it? Sometimes it is, and sometimes it's not. And if you say no, that doesn't mean that you're bad, that doesn't mean that you're a failure, it just means that you need to realign your priorities and you need to realign your goals. And then this is how she broke down goals. Um, so set a yearly goal. Like every January, we always set yearly goals. So, and these are just examples. Um, maybe you wanna hit Success Club 10 every month. Sign 12 coaches, go on a family vacation, and pay $6,000 on your student loans. When you look at that, it looks overwhelming, it looks daunting, and it's easy to kind of get off track. And six months in, you've done nothing to get yourself to that goal. So instead, break it into quarterly goals, which is where that 12-week year comes into play, because it takes your yearly goal and it breaks it down into quarterly goals. So now, if you want to hit Success Club 10 each month, every quarter, you need to help at least five people a month with a challenge pack. You need to save $500 a month to be able to pay $6,000 on your student loans. And you need to sign one coach a month to be able to sign 12 coaches by the end of the year. And this quarterly goal looks a lot more manageable and a lot less overwhelming than looking at this huge yearly goal. And then you just break those quarterly goals down into daily activities. So if you wanna help five people each month with a challenge pack to hit Success Club 10, what do you need to do every day? You need to be doing the vital behaviors. You need to post three to five times a day. You need to invite three to five people. You have to do your personal development. You need to add people to your network. Um, you need to schedule your group so that you know what you're inviting to. So you just break it down and then it makes it much easier. And then it, it takes away that overwhelming yearly goal and puts it into, okay, I can, I can do this every single day to get to here. Um, and she really encouraged us to take a few of our yearly goals and break them down like that. And again, everybody's goals are different. You know, it, there's no right goal, there's no wrong goal. Um, and then again on Sunday, like I said, she plans out the, the week, she reflects on the previous week, what, was she, what did she struggle with, what did she do good, um, and what's she grateful for. That was a big thing that she went over a lot is being grateful because so many times, calm yourself, so many times people get 
all hung up on the rank and the business and working and all that. And they just stop there. They forget to stop and really just be grateful for everything that they have. Um, and then just take it one day at a time. Because that's really all you can do. You're just going to stress yourself out if you try and do more than that. This last, or this slide was, it was the end of our diamond training. Um, she had a special breakfast for diamond coaches. And I loved this part because she had two of her downline coaches speak. And they both talked about how it was, how they had set goals and how they didn't achieve them because along the way their priorities changed and to reach that goal didn't align with their priorities. So you have to be realistic. Um, you, it's, it's okay if you don't reach every goal, but it's still moving you towards the end goal. So it's still going to compound. You're still going to get the compound effect over time, but if you don't hit a goal, it's not the end of the world. Um, and I, like I've told April this before, I set four diamond goals, goal dates, and I missed them all. And I would just realign, revisit, and try again. Um, you know, I didn't say, well, I didn't hit diamond, so I'm done. I quit. Um, take action with your time. You have to be good at time management. If you haven't read Eat That Frog, that's really, really great for time management. Um, control the controllable. There are some things that are going to come up that you have no control over. You just have to roll with it, do what you can, and your success matches your effort. So if you're not putting in the effort, you're not going to see the success. Again, in the compound effect, take the actions and it will fall into place. Don't compare yourself to others. People go at different paces, people achieve things at different paces, and that doesn't mean. That's not a reflection of you. So just keep doing every day what you need to do and it will come. Um, she's, they had us, you know, think about what we want in 2017. So we set a few goals for 2017. Then we set our main priorities. Then we thought about what are you willing or not willing to sacrifice? And again, this, the one coach that spoke, her goal was elite. In this time frame, she ended up getting pregnant, and once she had a baby, her priorities changed. She no longer, you know, was willing to sacrifice not being with her child and not having that time to work her business, and elite did not become a priority anymore. Um, and you make the time. So, you know, Everybody has the same 24 hours. Like I said, you have to make the time. You have to make the sacrifices. Um, stop watching TV. Um, stop going to happy hour every Friday. And it's, it has to be on you. You have to make the sacrifice. You have to decide that the sacrifice is worth the goal. Nobody can do it for you. And if you don't do it for you, it's not going to be deep enough to make you push harder. And also figure out when you're at your best. Um, and now this is for like morning, night, like I'm a night owl. I have found that I work best from like seven to midnight. I'm not a good morning person. I'm slow in the morning, I'm crabby in the morning, and I don't work as efficiently in the morning. So if I have things that I need to do, I know I just do them between eight and 11 because that fits into my schedule. That's when I'm the most creative and that's when I have the most push. And basically just you're in control. Whether or not you are successful as a coach is on you. You have to drop the excuses and you just have to do it. The resources are there, the tools are there, the support is there, it's on you. All right, so then this was once we started the actual event. Um, it was called the Purpose Event. And she started off talking about how do you make this your thing? Beachbody is something a little different for everybody, and that's okay. You have to want to change more than you want to stay the same. And then she said, Beachbody is a tool. You are the vehicle. 
So we have these awesome programs, we have these nutrition plans, but we are the vehicle to match people up with them. And then we help them create the lifestyle change. Um, look at your vision and your goals as a matter of when, not a matter of if. So just start saying, it will happen. Um, not, you know, if I ever would be an elite coach, I would do blah, blah, blah. Just say, when I'm an elite coach, this is what I'm going to do. And it will change your mindset. Um, it's going to get hard. I, I can promise you it's going to get hard. There are days I have cried about this. There are days I have been ready to hit cancel and just figure something else out because it's, it's hard. But if you don't have a strong vision, you're just going to quit. My vision is so, like, and it, and it changes, but I know where this business can take me. I know where I want to go. And when it gets hard, I have my 15-minute whiny pants um, pity party, and then I move on, and I just keep pushing. And again, they, they talked about this a lot. Do your goals and your priorities meet up? And that's something that you're going to have to figure out for yourself. Celebrate your success. Um, a lot of times people hit a milestone or they hit something and then it's like, yay me, and then they go right on to the next thing. Take time and celebrate yourself because you're a freaking rock star. You deserve to be celebrated. So don't feel like you have to go, 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 go all the time. And it's okay to change your goals. There's, there is nothing that says, the goals that you set when you signed up have to be the goals that you have three years from now. They can change, they should change, because that means that you're growing. And when you set goals, they need to be SMART goals. Um, if you've never heard this analogy, I think that's what it is, maybe, I don't know. I, I don't know what the right word is, but um, they need to be this SMART over here. Specific, Measurable, accountable, realistic, and timely. So you need to be able to say what your goal is and then in, down the road be able to actually say, yes, I hit that goal. So it needs to have a date, um, have a way to be tracked, have a way to keep you accountable, be realistic. Um, if you are an Emerald coach right now, saying that you want to earn $15,000 by March, probably not realistic. Um, so make sure that they fit into these. And I've actually started having my challengers do this too, because it's great for them as well as coaches. And then how to safeguard your success. You have to make it a priority. Um, you have to have to make this business a priority if you want to be successful. You have to focus. And again, that's kind of what I was talking about when I, with my Facebook scrolling problem. I can easily spend eight hours a day working and get nothing accomplished because I'm not focused. You have to make tough choices. You have to maybe say no to, to a party. You have to say no to a family event. You have to say no to upgrading your cable, things like that, but they will pay off down the road. And then you have to know what your meaning and what your purpose are, because that's what's going to drive you to do this every single day. Um, again, with the compound effect, the choices you make today, you will see in the future. So you, if you're not doing the vital behaviors now, and you start doing them today, you're not going to see the results of that tomorrow. It's going to take a month, two months, three months of consistent choices to see the payoff. Um, again, your goals have to mean something to you, which is why you need to make them your own. Um, don't set your goals to what your upline is or to what someone else in the network's goals are, because if it's not important to you, it's not going to make you push when it gets hard. And be able to track it. Be able to say, I did or I did not accomplish it. All right. One of, she also had a bunch of speakers. And one of them was 
Katie Ersta. If you don't follow her on Facebook, she is a coach on the dream team. She's a cancer survivor. She has the most funny sense of humor and she's really, really passionate and really good at, she's very tough love. Um, but she talked about kind of branding yourself and, and stepping out and being able to be different than everybody else. Um, and there are 450,000 coaches. What are you doing that makes you stand out from all the other people? Um, the one thing she said is we're really quick to conform. We see the top coaches or successful coaches doing this. So suddenly we think we need to do this. Um, you, and you cannot duplicate a person. You can duplicate a process, but you cannot duplicate a person. So you have to be yourself. You cannot try to be someone else because it's just going to come off fake. It's going to come off phony and people aren't going to buy it or believe it. If you want to level up your business, level up your why. And don't make a why that doesn't fit you. This was like, don't set goals just because someone else sets the same goals. Um, she said, your biggest asset is your story. Write that mother effer like someone needs to see it. You are relatable to someone. Someone out there needs to see your story. So share it and share it often. Now don't use the same exact post every single time, but people need to see your story. And facts tell, stories sell. Um, this part, oh, I didn't do the other thing. This wasn't supposed to be here yet, but the, these are another few things that she talked about. Um, it was distractions, competition, and I don't even know how to say that word, commoditization. Um, but basically distractions. A goldfish has the attention span of about six to nine seconds, and it has now been determined that humans have an attention span of about six to nine seconds. So you basically have to fascinate a goldfish. And that is, there's so many distractions. So you have to, you have to catch people's eye. Um, grab the orange ticket. She talked about this and put it in, I've never been, I don't know of this, I guess this is at Disney World, but there's like a green ticket line and an orange ticket line. And the orange ticket line is supposed to be better she said, honestly, I don't really see a difference, but everybody wants the orange ticket because people think it's better. So people want, you need people to want to join you because you are the best choice. You want to be the fancy one that everybody wants to go to. Not the like, so, so, you know, I guess I'll go stand in this line. People, you want people to want to join you and be the pistachio. She did this as an ice cream comparison. She said there's a lot of people that go for vanilla ice cream because it's safe, it's common, everybody knows it. She said then there's people that go for the pistachio, which I didn't even know they made pistachio ice cream. But she said those people know exactly what they want, exactly what they're looking for, exactly where to find it. You need to be like the pistachio ice cream. You need to be so drilled in on your target market that people know exactly what you're about, exactly why you're doing it, and they want to join you for those reasons. And then what makes you different? Facebook is super noisy. Um, if you are on there, we see about 5,000 ads a day. Um, do you speak to your audience? And this is kind of what I was talking about with the pistachio ice cream. First of all, you need to know what your target audience is. And then you need to figure out, are you speaking to them or are you just kind of throwing stuff out there and hoping that you attract somebody? Um, like there's another coach in our town who 
we we have a lot of the same mutual friends but she is very christian and she's a mom those are two things i don't relate to at all i mean i i don't go to church and stuff i guess she goes to church all the time she posts about that a lot she's very into her faith so that's that's not my audience i'm not trying to attract those people i'm not trying to attract moms because that's not who i am and then repeat and retell if you're adding to your network all the time you need to tell your story over and over and over because you're always adding new people who need to hear it and just because someone read your story you know six months ago doesn't mean they don't need to hear it again today you need to be authentic don't try to be anybody else don't try to act like anybody else just be you because then you're going to attract the right people and when you're yourself and you continuously put yourself out there and share your story and you're vulnerable you're going to accelerate trust which people have to trust you to want to join you and use familiar cues um, she talked about and this is what katie had used she has that every sweat matters project so Almost all of her posts have hashtag ESM. People know every sweat matters or this hashtag relate to Katie Ersta. You need to have people see something and immediately think of you. And then she shared this quote, this earning trust demands an investment of time and effort because predictability requires a guaranteed certainty. People have to gain or you have to gain people's trust and it doesn't happen overnight. It happens with consistency in your posting, with cons consistently showing up and having people know that you are going to be there. Moving on, this is a lot of talking. All right, and then these were a few of her quotes that I wrote down. Make the mission matter to you. Um, find out why Beachbody is important to you, why you love doing it, and that is your mission. If you want to make a business, make it personal. And this business is hard work because it's heart work. Because we're not out there pushing mascara, pushing leggings, pushing totes, anything like that. We are helping people change their lives, which takes a lot of heart and it's not for everybody and that's okay but you have to actually be in this business for the right reasons to be successful and then this one i love no one deserves to make an impact or no one deserves to make an income without making an impact okay so then the next guest speakers talked about building your business in your pockets, which these were both busy moms who at the time were working full time and made the business work for them because they squeezed the daily activities into small chunks of time. Um, and you just have to think if, if you're busy and you don't think you have time to make it work, that this is better than the alternative. So being able to do this, and um, I think it was Megan Blinka that shared this, and she said that this quote came up because she was working her business on the couch with her husband and her kids, and she felt bad because she wasn't paying attention to them. And her husband said this, because the alternative would have been her still being at her nine to five job that she hated, probably working overtime so she wouldn't have even been home. She would have come home exhausted, miserable, and crabby. So you always have to think that it could be better than the alternative. And she also said this, you can work the business part-time, but not sometimes. Which is basically coming back to consistency. You can work the business a few hours a day if that's all you have, but you cannot work the business a few hours a day whenever you feel like it. You can't pick and choose and you can't work it this Monday and then not do it again until two weeks later when you have time on a Friday. 
you have to be consistent and you have to do it every day, but you can do it part time. Know what you're good at um, and then stick to that. If Facebook is your jam, then be good at Facebook and be on Facebook. If blogging is your thing, then blog. If you hate to write and you have no idea about blogging, don't try and blog. Don't, don't try and force yourself into something that you're not good at. Um, now that's not saying you can't learn it down the road, but if you don't have time to be on five social media platforms, pick two. Um, if, and Snapchat was another one that she said. She's, she's like, I do not understand Snapchat at all. I know there's people on it. I don't like it. I don't know how to use it. I, it's not my thing, and I am okay with that. But you just have to be consistent. I feel like consistent should be like Beachbody's theme word or something. Um, commit to being here for at least a year. And that's not necessarily a year from the time that you signed up. If you signed up and then you were just kind of a discount coach for nine months and then decide to work the business, that doesn't mean you stick around for three months and then when things aren't taking off, you quit. From the time you decide that you're in as a coach, give it a year. And she said Facebook Live is really great if you don't have a lot of time because you can get in, you can show people your personality, you can add value, you, you know, it terrifies a lot of people, but just do it and then you can get out. So if you do not have a lot of time, create a list of daily and weekly activities. The four vital behaviors need to be on there every day, but bulk your activities. If you only have an hour a day to work, um, maybe one day you send all of your emails. Uh, maybe the next day you check in with all your challengers. The next day you check in with all your coaches. Um, you can bulk it into single activities that you do each day, but set reminders on your phone so that you don't forget. And have a daily work time, but you have to be flexible with it. Um, and if it doesn't get done that day, you just squeeze it in where you can. To figure out your pockets, look at your day and see where do you have 15 or 20 minutes here or there that you could plug things in. Um, she had said for her it was the drive to work, the drive from home to work, her lunch break, and then when her kids went to bed. She knew that was her time that she had to squeeze her, her business in to make it work. And don't get hung up on having the perfect tracking system. It doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to have fancy boxes and check marks and colors. Just find something and just do it. And then every day, ask yourself, what can I do differently today that will set myself apart from others? Because again, there's a lot of us, and you need to attract people to you. All right, the next thing was recruiting is a mindset. Act like a top coach, and they will believe you are one, and eventually so will you. It's all in your mindset and how you present yourself. If you act like a coach that is very timid, is not confident, has no idea what they're doing, people are gonna see that and people are gonna feed off that. You just have to act like you know what you're doing, you're a top coach, you got this, you have the best team, and people are gonna believe that. It's kind of along the same lines as fake it till you make it, but people are gonna believe what you put out. So don't, I mean, don't lie, but don't, don't be afraid to believe in yourself and act like you are a top coach. Um, this is your party and no one is coming if you don't invite them. If you have a birthday party for your child, you're not going to set the date and set the time and then hope that people come. You're going to invite them. People need to be invited. They they won't always come to you. You have to actually send that invite. And then make sure that your public social media posts reflect what you are sending in your messages. If you're posting 
and posting about one thing and then sending messages about another, you're gonna give people mixed signals. So make sure that your posts show that you're a product of the product, that you are helping people, that you run challenge groups, that you run coaching sneak peeks, that people can join you as a coach. Make sure that people know that. And this business is hard, but being unhappy with your situation is also hard and you have to pick which hard you're willing to live with. Some common thoughts with mindset as far as coaching. Um, people might think, I don't deserve to be here. I'm not a strong leader. I'm not confident. What if they don't join me? You just have to change the mindset. I know, you're gonna have to wait one second. Just change your mindset and instead of thinking like this, Think like this. And if they don't join you, it's kind of their loss. So it's okay. It doesn't matter. Move on. Oh, and then this was just the last thing on recruiting. Um, it's fun. You just, just keep telling yourself it's fun. You're good at it. You are offering people a huge gift that could change their life. You're a top coach. People can't wait to hear from you, and there is no wrong way. There is no right way to do this, so just do it. Um, what are you eating? Stop. My dogs are so annoying. Um, people need coaching in their life, so don't think of it as you're bothering someone. Think of it as you are offering them a gift that could change someone's life, but you have to be real. Just be sincere and keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate it. And the worst case is they end up, they got a great workout, they have an awesome time, and then they decide that coaching isn't for them. That's not the end of the world. All right. And then the last speaker was talking about leading from the front. She was talking about leadership. And she said, you have to be the kind of leader that you would want to follow. So make, prior, or make personal development a priority every single day, whether it's national wake-up calls, podcasts, audiobooks, regular books, just every single day you need to be doing personal development. Make Success Club non-negotiable every single month. You're not going to sit there and ask your coaches to hit Success Club when you're not hitting it yourself. You have to be doing what you're asking your coaches to do. Turn your price objections into coach invites. Um, she had said if she gets a price objection and somebody says that they don't have money for a challenge pack, then she offers the coaching opportunity. And she said, it's shocking how many people can't afford the challenge pack, but suddenly you tell them they can sign up to be a coach and make some extra money, and suddenly they have the money for the challenge pack. So... Again, worst thing, they say no. It's not the end of the world. Follow up a lot. People typically need to hear it six times, six or seven times before they commit. So following up once probably is not going to get it done. Um, use the GoPro method, which if you haven't read that book by Eric Worre, it's really good too. And say, if I, would you? So for example, if I sent you a webinar on what we do as coaches, would you have time to watch it? Or would you be interested in watching it? And then track. You have to track who you're talking to. You have to track who you're following up with. Um, and then she had just said that there's four vital behaviors. These are the two that she tries to focus on the most. Um, personal development and recognition, and make sure you're choosing personal development for where you're struggling with and be intentional with it. If you are struggling with leadership, read leadership personal development. If you have time management down to a T, you are awesome with your day, you are awesome with your time, you don't need to do time management personal development. That's, that's not going to help you grow your business. You need to do personal development for where you're struggling. And you have to actually be intentional. You have to actually take it in and then you have to implement it. Um, you can't help others if you're running on empty. So if you are not, if you're not 
full and you're not up to yourself and you're not doing personal development and you're you know behind closed doors you're really really struggling you can't help somebody else so that's why personal development is so important and then recognize your coaches for their small and large successes everybody loves to be recognized everybody loves to have someone acknowledge them so whether it's as small as selling their first challenge pack or it's as large as a rank advancement shout them out give them love and make them feel special and then this quote was what she finished with success is not instantaneous over time the vital daily activities will compound and create long-term success and freedom so and even just putting this, this PowerPoint together, a few of the words that came up over and over and over, consistency, compound effect, and goals. So that was kind of the gist of it. Um, I'm sorry, I talked really fast and I hope I didn't ramble, but she also said that she, had it videotaped, so she said that once they were public and edited, she would share those, so if I get access to them, I will share them in the team page and stuff for you guys, because they were really good, and it was nice to hear from other coaches, and we heard from a lot of people in her downline, and it was refreshing to hear them talk about how they struggled, how they didn't hit goals, how they, you know, they had major, major setbacks, but they just kept going and now they're they're finding success thank you Mullen. that was <laughs> i like that ashley i'm sure she um didn't miss anything what do you think <laughs> so thorough <laughs> yes acronym that was the word i was trying to think of all i could come up with is an analogy <laughs> um what would you think your biggest takeaway was from that Daniel. I'm probably, I don't know. I mean, it was like every, every speaker and like every sentence was like, oh my God, that's perfect. Oh my God, that's perfect. But really probably just doing it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really good at coming up with a plan. I'm really good at coming up with ideas. Not so great at the execution part. Done is better than perfect. Yes. Um, love that. Ashley, what was your biggest takeaway from it? Um, I think I had a couple. I mean, I have tons and tons of notes written down too, but a big one was um, for a long time I was using like obstacles. Um, so I had a really hard time looking at everyone else and all the other coaches, basically comparing and saying like, well, they don't have kids, and the ones that did have kids, it always seemed like their kids were, you know, older and um, in school and, or, you know, at daycare, and I was like, well, mine are here with me all day long on my lap or, you know, nonstop, and I let that, like, kind of take over for a long time, thinking that I can't do it, I'm not going to go as fast, and it's okay, I'll just go slow, and I'm not, like, a slow moving, like, I want to go where I want to go fast, and I couldn't figure out how to do it, um, and now I kind of have the mindset of, I have three kids at home and I'm still going to show everyone that I can do it. Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of helps a lot with like, just like a mental thing in my head. Another thing was to keep things a little more simple. Um, I don't need to go do all this crazy things that I feel like I never know what's going on. Um, really the only important thing is to uh, make sure I'm hitting my personal goals, make sure I have them broken down so I can actually reach them instead of like putting them on the list, how she was talking about breaking them down. I could put on my list, you know, to be elite by the end of the year. And then, you know, the end of the year comes and I'm like, well, I'm nowhere near there, but that's because I didn't break it down quarterly and then weekly and then daily. Um, and also that, uh, ex uh, how things change. I had for a long time, I want to be five star elite for my vision board this year. And while I do like that thought, um, I have a husband that doesn't have a job. So basically my only goal is to survive 2017 without having to go back to work. And that's kind of what my vision board is. And I still have, you know, those other, I do want to become five star. I do want to do this. And I do want to be elite because I seriously need that pay for that stuff. But, um, 
it's kind of more of what I started for was to help other people. And if I could just keep helping other people and getting the pay for that, then I'm going to be able to survive the year. So he did tell us to create a hashtag for this year. Um, and like how you would hashtag last year and that you're supposed to put the first thing you thought of. And literally the only thing I thought of for last year was I survived. And then my hashtag for 2017 will be, I will survive. Um, because a lot of times in my head, I'm like, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. Oh my gosh. Like I, I need to text my old boss and tell her I need to come back to work. Like, and I just need to keep going. Um, so, and, and I, I for a long time, it was like, I don't want to have to wake up early when my kids aren't sleeping all night and I still don't have to, it's my choice. But, um, if I want things to happen the way I want them to happen, then there's no more week sleeping in and all that stuff and I just have to be okay with it and excited about it instead of like miserable about it so you can sleep you can sleep in a couple of years when you <laughs> when you don't have to <laughs> wake up early and you know stay up late and, and put it in all the work that you're putting in now will give you the opportunity to just you know I'm gonna I'm gonna go and not worry about my messages right now and um I will tell you that that's like one of my favorite things is being like, you know, right now with the baby, like, I don't feel like I need to check in every, you know, hour if it goes a couple hours and I don't respond to my messages or, you know, I know my coaches are, you know, going to be okay. In the beginning, I, I just wasn't able to like kind of do that. And I think that it's because we're excited and, you know, you don't want to miss anybody, but I really think it's the best thing is that you put your family first, your priorities first, and you make this business fit when you can. So you will survive. <laughs> and um, you had a nice paycheck this week though, right? Or last week. And I'm sure that helped a ton. You are amazing. I don't know how you rock that out. Ashley has like 28 success club points in like the first week of January with, yeah, she's rocking it. So you're awesome. Um, Mullen has a ton too. You have like 23 or something. You're crazy girl. Um, so good job to both of you. So does anybody have any questions or anything? Any parting thoughts? Look at that sweet baby. He's I know you had said um, about Melanie's page in the beginning. If you, I don't know if some of you guys know this, probably because you don't follow her as closely as I do. Shock her. But, um, <laughs> she, she has a new Facebook page. So you have to go and like that one because that's her business page where she's going to be doing like her business tip Tuesdays and sharing her trainings and stuff. Oh, so I if you want to get those, you do have to follow her new, her new page. Okay. So yeah, we were talking, it seems like she's probably going to branch out to kind of teach network marketing, you know, beach body coaching, things like that, obviously, as she should. She should. Yeah. That's kind of what it seems like her 2017 goal is. Yeah. So. So, all right. Cool. Thanks for that tip. So, all right, well, we are going to get moving. Um, so thank you so much, Mullen, for bringing all that awesome info. <laughs> Jamie. <laughs> and um, I hope you guys have a great weekend. And so next week will be no team call. Uh, and then the following week, it'll be back to Thursday. So um, Monday is at 11, National Wake Up Call. Make sure you're there. And um, uh, I would definitely go on YouTube. Um, uh, Greg was just asking me this yesterday, you know, is YouTube considered personal development too? Absolutely, yes. Uh, find somebody that you connect with. Obviously, you know, Greg is like, I'm not really, you know, going to connect with those um, busy moms like <laughs> most of our team. So, you know, it's really important for you to find somebody that speaks to you and, you know, you can relate to and, and kind of, um, you know, hear it from somebody else. So definitely stock YouTube for like top coaches um, for 2014 through 17. Go check them out. And I hope you guys have a great weekend. Yeah, I told about Caleb. Scotty Hobbs, um, Jamie Fitzpatrick, who was in the top 10 this year. Um, I told him Trey Bear, but I also said don't take his lead in a <laughs> um, leaving for a wine MLM, but he does have some good training from before that. Um, Miguel, oh, what's, what's Miguel's last name? I can't think of what his last name is. He's Canadian. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah goes, he's Canadian. Not that that matters. <laughs> but yeah, it's Miguel something. He's super successful. Something with the C. So, 
So, all right, well, I will post this recording late, uh, later today, and it was good to see you. Thanks, Mullen, for bringing that. Thanks, Ashley, for your tidbits, and good to see all your shiny faces. Bye.